Yes, and these stocks, uh, Matt, have followed through this morning uh, with these gains, trying to pick apart exactly what the drivers are. Obviously, this is a sector sec pretty sensitive to any suggestion that there could be, you know, federal legalization. On the other hand, you know, it, the group was down 70 percent off the highs. Like a lot of other uh, kind of speculative areas of the market, they have bounced a lot recently. What's your read on it? Well, yeah, we've noticed over the last, you know, 12 to 15 months, obviously the sector overall has been on a bit of a downward trend here, but it's very spring coiled to anything at the federal level. We saw this back in November. Nancy Mace, Republican in, in Congress, put something forward. Stocks were up, I think, in the, the next week, about 20 percent. Even a few months ago, Chuck Schumer wrote a letter to some constituents. There's a lot of people on the sidelines in the sector, in my view, that are waiting for these type of headlines. Even if it's not likely to come to fruition, this type of buzz really gets the short sellers to cover, uh, as well as uh, incremental capital to come into the space in advance of uh, hopefully positive news in the coming months or, or even years here. Well, you say it's not likely to happen, meaning full passage of any uh, bill of this kind uh, perhaps does not seem like there's a straight line uh, to that outcome. What does that mean for the stocks? Are we just talking about a fleeting bounce in that instance? Well, it depends. That has happened a few times over the last year. But I think if you look fundamentally, the, the valuations are at very attractive levels, particularly for many of the leading multi-state operators in the U.S. And people, again, aren't really looking at it from a valuation standpoint. It's more of a binary. Will there be federal legalization? Uh, do I have custody issues right now in holding securities where the fundamental business is, is, is dealing with a, with a Schedule One drug still? So I think in terms of, I like how you said it, a, a straight line is really something that no one is anticipating. But 70 percent of Americans seem to want liberalization or full legalization uh, for both recreational and medical. Uh, for the medical side, it's, it's even higher than that. Um, and we have a number of politicians, both Republican and Democrat, looking to stir it up. So with midterm elections and other sort of political variables, it's really hard to handicap exactly when and how. But certainly there's enough support behind this where the tailwinds, I think, are eventually going to come. Yeah, we'll see if the, that makes its way to the halls of the Senate. I did see some analysis this morning, uh, Matt, that if more fails, uh, that the SAFE Act, which is much more centered around banking, could be, I think what BTIG called a logistical or a logical legislative fallback. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that the safe bank is, is clearly the most bipartisan. It really deals with this, the structural elements of how legal cannabis operators at a state level can, can lend or can get mortgage approvals. There's not as much in it as something that's a full sale legalization. So there's the Safe Banking Act. But I think a lot of people have to look also to Chuck Schumer, who has a different uh, piece of legislation that's expected to come out in April in draft form, the Cannabis Administration Opportunity Act. And that's something that maybe he'll get together with some of the senators and other politicians that are dealing with the Moore Act and potentially something comes out of that down the road. But again, the closer we get to November, the, the less clear it gets if there is a change up with, with sort of who's in power here. So I think it's fair to say that safe banking, uh, if, you had to, if you had to guess you know, statistically or probability, has the, the highest degree of probability. But Chuck Schumer and Cory Booker have both come out saying that they don't want any, you know, dealings with the Safe Banking Act until a more, uh, you know, sort of a social justice, social equity reform uh, gets put forward first. Matt, if we assume no change in the legal treatment uh, on any of these fronts, what stocks do you still think uh, have some value at these levels? Yeah, there's a number of them, U.S. You know, multi-state operators. We think TrueLeaf and Green Thumb Industries, uh, CureLeaf, Cresco just announced a material uh, acquisition, $2 billion acquisition for a company called Columbia Care. These are very scaled-up operators already that trade at you know, around eight times, maybe nine times forward uh, EBITDA. And this is sort of real EBITDA now. We have the leaders in the space doing, you know, one and a half billion uh, or more in revenues for this year. That's anticipated. So I think all of these operators, as much as the federal catalyst would be great to see more fund flows into the sector, you know, even if we have interim or maybe another delay for a year or so, I think it benefits a lot of the existing incumbents to continue to dig in and, and get, uh, you know, their heels in. And, and these first mover advantage and high barriers to entry in a lot of these states is actually a positive, even though, of course, they would love to see an eventual liberalization of, of, of the sector as a whole. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.